gonna show you how to hook up one of these. Today I'm gonna show you how to hook up one of these Chinese transformers. This one specifically is 12 volt 1 amp DC. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab one old power cable. This is one I found on the attic and we don't use anymore. So I decided I'll just use it for this project. As you can see, it's pretty simple. You got the output. This is the negative and positive terminal. And over here you got the uh, mains wiring input, which is the ground, the neutral and the live. And the way we can check which is which is by looking up a color chart because I already picked this one apart just a little bit and made a small cut in the cable. And as you can see, we got a blue wire, a yellow wire, and a brown wire. Now, how do we know which one is which? For that, we're gonna need a multimeter. I'm sorry for the shitty setup, but it's the best I got for you right now. What do you wanna do? We wanna grab this multimeter and we wanna put it into this mode. Uh, this will check for a connection. So if I were to show you guys the multimeter, like this, now it's one. If you were to touch these two leads, to go to zero, meaning that there is a connection. So what we can do is for this cable, we can check if it's working properly by connecting one of either of these prongs. And this is the ground connection. And then we can look this cable. Yeah, as you can see, you got neutral over here. Then you got life and then you got E for earth. So the one in the middle should be this right here. Quick word of advice. Please don't use a cable without earth, especially on these Chinese transformers. Uh, I don't know how safe these are. These are very convenient, very cheap and very easy to use. But if something goes wrong, you really want to have earth hooked up. I already checked this and I already marked the wiring. On this side, you see in front of here, I made a little scratch. This is the life terminal. This is neutral and this is ground. And I can prove that to you by just grabbing this plug. The middle one is uh, earth. So that's going to be the ground. And if I were to touch this. So if I were to touch the middle one over here, you see the value goes to zero. If I were to put this into the life side, and were to touch the pin I scratched underneath to mark that that's life. We will get the same result. If we were to touch anything else, it will stay to one because these wires are all completely isolated. So that leaves this to be neutral. So what you can do now is grab our wire strippers, cut off this cable because we got literally no use for this part. I will just put that in a bin and save it for another project. Okay, and we can use these wire strippers to strip off the end of the isolation, just like that. Okay, so now, which is which? Again, same thing, put one into earth and check the values. Brown wire doesn't do anything. Blue wire doesn't do anything. Yellow wire. Okay, so yellow is ground. And now we got to figure out which one is life. And an educated guess is going to tell me that that is going to be... Oh, no, nope, I was wrong. It's Okay. So blue is life, ground, new, or uh, ground is yellow, neutral is ground. So we can strip these wires knowing that we got the correct wires here. We can just strip them down. Maybe we'll just need to cut off a little more of this isolation. Okay, that's somewhat worked. And what I like to do for these kind of things is actually fold these onto themselves. So you got this piece of wire. What I like to do is just fold it double. So we got more wire to actually grab onto on the transformer. So again, just fold it double, twist it up, make sure everything's 
closed off. It doesn't do much, it just makes it easier to work with the wires. So we're gonna need our three wires, neutral, live, ground, and for this one, all we just need is a screwdriver and you can plug them into these terminals. Uh, but what I want to do is add a little bit of shrink wrap. What I want to do is add a little bit of shrink wrap to make sure they're properly isolated. So I got a little bit of shrink wrap right here. We're just going to grab one piece and we're going to cut this one into three smaller pieces. Also got a lighter for the shrink wrap and I got a pair of scissors to actually cut them into nice even strips. So they're somewhat even. It's good enough for this, what we're doing. Okay, so make sure that all of these terminals are actually loose and I can see they are. If you can see that difference in between them the one on the very left has been closed off, and as you can see, it's folded down because of the screw. If we were to release it again, it will go back, put it in there, and screw that in tight. Now we're going to make sure that the wiring in no way, shape or form is touching. And over here I see a small problem, the wiring could potentially touch over here. So what I'm gonna do... So what I like to do is actually just open up these terminals again. And the easiest way, instead of using pliers like I was actually planning on doing, is to just twist it. Make sure not to get any copper into your skin because it is very, very thin and it will cut into your fingers very easily. I can confirm I've had it happen to myself multiple times and almost again just now. It's looking nice and tight. Put that in there. Don't force it if it doesn't want to go in because then it will just fall apart again. Okay, that's in there perfect. And there's nothing sticking out there, not a single piece of copper. So what I'm gonna do now is actually use the shrink wrap. But first I probably wanna use the, nah, this will be fine. Gonna leverage over here. Hold it under there. Making sure not to close up the other piece of shrink wrap. Okay, so now the brown wire and then the blue wire. Screw it shut. Tight, but don't over tighten it again. Okay, life is in there. Good. So, make sure you push the shrink wrap forward as much as possible. No wires are touching and all the wire is in the shrink wrap. Because that's why we add the shrink wrap. Because that can cover the wires. Make sure they won't be able to touch each other. Okay, grab your lighter. Don't burn yourself. Very important step. Okay, that's in there tight. Nothing is touching as far as I can see. And now we've got that all hooked up, as you can see. And what I'm gonna do after this video, just to make sure is I'm going to add a little tiny bit of hot glue in between there, because that isolates the wires a little bit better, make sure they don't come loose. So what I wanna do now, plug this in. And I'm holding it over here and nothing exploded. So it's working probably. Let's test it by putting in these prongs and setting them to DC. So as you can see, 200 DC. Okay, negative and positive. Those are in there. I can hit the switch. Okay, now try to test it again. 
Oh, we put it onto the wrong mode. Yes, as you can see, we got 13.4 volts. We also, let me turn this off again, making sure no power is coming through anymore. Yes. Okay, so at the end here, you see the small orange part, right? That's a small screw you can adjust. And what this will do is actually vary power just a little bit. Not all will have these. If we were to close this one more, we should get a lower end result. So now we get 11.7, 11.8 volts, somewhere around that. So this is what you use to adjust the power to exactly 12 volts, which we can use for LED strips, uh, small motors, PC fans, whatever runs on 12 volts and one amps. Again, make sure to put this into a safe place where no one's gonna touch this the inside of this touch the wrong part and you're dead uh, i don't want anyone getting electrocuted and saying oh it's my fault no if you don't know what you're doing don't ever touch this kind of cable okay don't always have a multimeter make sure you don't touch the inside of this board only the terminals to hook it up without power obviously and make sure to isolate the wires using hot glue or whatever you have and make sure to put it into a box like whatever you can use a small lunch box like this one for example it's a very simple one i got two more transformers in here and when i'm going to use this into one in my in one of my projects i will put it into a nice box or at least put it somewhere away inside the project where it's isolated and it won't kill anyone. So, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I apologize for the poor camera quality of this. I probably will get something better in the future soon. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitch, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.